In the last video, we created our first neural network in Keras. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to improve it. So getting started, um, the first thing I want to point out is that this line right here isn't something that's actually needed. Uh, by default, you won't have it. So what batch size is, is it's how many different examples of training data are trained at once. And by default, it's just going to train all of them at once. And you might not see it initially, but the problem with that is that it sort of overfits or underfits in this situation actually. So when it tries to uh, train everything at once, it can't sort of work out the individual features of everything. So it sort of doesn't get it to be the best it can. So if I train it real quick, uh, the way it is now, you'll see how it runs through and does fine. Uh, we wanted zero, gave us 0 0.01 and then so on. But um, that works. And in this situation with only four training examples, that's fine. But what you can do is just bring back that bit of line and it will make it so it runs better. And this might not even make it so it just runs better. It might make it so that it works at all in some situations because a lot of the time it won't be able to train if you have it so that it's not stochastic as it's called. So stochastic gradient descent basically allows it to make it so that it can uh, make the most of its training data. Okay, so the next part is called dropout. So right next to the import with dense, we want to import dropout. What dropout basically is, it's a um, it's a layer that drops out certain neurons to stop it from overfitting. So it makes it so that the network doesn't rely on certain neurons and it does that by making it so that in certain training examples, they're just not there. So to add a dropout layer, all you do is model.add dropout and you can just give it a percentage or a chance or a rate as it calls it that it will just drop out a neuron so this is for any one neuron what's the chance that it's not going to be there in a training example so i'll just do 0 0.1 you don't want to go too high but you don't want to go too low as well it's you can train a neuron network without it but it does make it so that it trains a bit better and more efficiently and you can add it in between each layer so right here um you've got your input layer which is two neurons the first hidden layer, which is five neurons, then a dropout layer with 0.1 chance, another hidden layer with point, uh, with five neurons, and another dropout with 0.1 chance, or, yeah, 0.1 chance, and then an output layer with one neuron. Okay, so if I let that run, let's see how it does. It's running a bit slower, but that can be expected. You can see how that's 0 0.99 now, instead of it was like 0 0.97 before, that can just come with chance, but it is a marginal improvement and that's what you're looking for with these types of things because if you think about it, even maybe a 1% difference or 1% improvement in an image recognition software or something like that, it is a big difference. So that's out of every 100 uh, chances it gets to recognize something, if it gets one wrong that it didn't have to before, that's a big deal. So yeah, we've made those two improvements. So we've made it stochastic and we've given it dropout to avoid overfitting. So a few more things that you can do are just change the structure of the network and change the activation functions, as well as the optimizer and loss, but they will do for now. So the next thing we'll do is actually experiment with the shape. So if you wanted to, you could just totally remove this second hidden layer and just make it so that it's only got three layers in total. So an input layer of two neurons, a first hidden layer. Well, technically it has four, uh, four actually, because it's got the dropout layer as well. But yeah, input, first hidden, drop out and output. So with that, we can just test it and see how well it works. Okay, so it's gotten a bit worse, but that sort of can be expected because it's just lost half of its neurons pretty much. So say we go up to like 100. This might be a bit overkill, and it probably is, but we can just try it anyway. Just It's sort of experimentation. You can never get a perfect number, but some neural networks actually do this stuff for you. So really just is experimentation unless you use some of those. You can see right here it's going into scientific no uh, notation, so it's got a really low error, so 0 0.996, like back into the 99s, so that actually works surprisingly well. Um, I'm not sure if, well, yeah, that is all the examples right there, so there's nothing else that you can have. So that is definitely better in this situation, but in a lot of like times you might want to have less neurons because that could mean with too many neurons, it adjusts the training set too much. So that's called overfitting. I've mentioned it before. It's where it sort of 
over adjusts to the training examples and can't really adapt to testing examples, which is a big problem because it makes it so that the neural network is practically useless. So we've got that working. Uh, we know that we can pretty much have as many neurons as we want because we've covered all the examples, but you generally wouldn't want to go more than you need. So sort of go between a certain range, then shrink the range a bit, and then see what works the best and keep on experimenting, and that's how you'll find it. So the next things are the activation functions. So we've got the rectifier and the sigmoid at the moment. Uh, if you wanted to, you could just make it so that it's another rectifier. So if we do that, let it run. Okay, so that's actually gone down to zero and 0 0.98. So it seems like the uh, sigmoid was actually better. We can run it again. Obviously, you don't want to just test everything off of one. You've got to make it so that you run it a few times and get the average, but yep. Okay, so it's gone actually down to zero again and 0.99 and 0.98. So yep, that seems good. But I'll try turning it back into sigmoid and try the other sigmoid as well. Okay, so. I'm not sure exactly what this means in scientific notation off the top of my head, but it is obviously a very low value. Um, so that means that it's pretty much either perfected it or gone totally wrong. But I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably perfected it. So yeah, um, those are some of the main improvements you can make. Again, you could experiment with the loss function, but mean squared error um, in this situation is pretty good. You could also go with the linear. I'm not sure how to do that in Keras, but generally you want to stick to something like mean squared error and atom because they're some of the most basic ones. So yeah, that's the improvements you can make and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.